Solemnly, he sat on a snowmobile in the middle of his yard. It was July, and the temperature of the day had reached just over a hundred degrees. Cryptic nightmares sat drinking vintage whiskey through a crazy straw as he looked out over the vacant fields in which he typically kept his fox. A soft breeze fluttered through the leaves of the giant looming oak tree overhead. His hat sat torn and tattered on his head, cocked slightly at an angle, and one eyepiece of his sunglasses had fallen out and was lost long ago. However, as his field was barren, he did not care. Looking up, his gaze landed on a pair of mallards flying in the distance. Then his calm mind suddenly shifted to the curiosities of why he felt such an affinity for the small waterfowl. Still, an answer to his question never came. He kept ducks on his property, or rather, provided a place for them to spend their time. A pond sat in his backyard, stocked with aquatic plants, snails, and shrimp. It was surrounded by grass and other wild grains for the ducks to eat. Cryptic had essentially created a sanctuary for his beloved mallards. Each of the twelve that frequently called his yard home was given a name and loved. One in particular had remained on the property the longest and had since become Cryptic's favorite. Vincent was the bird's name. As Cryptic sipped at the crazy straw, he watched the elegant whiskey swirl through the loops and turns before reaching his lips. Today would have been a good day, he said to himself after finishing his swig. However, a problem had arisen in his train of thoughts pertaining to the VHS tape left on his porch that morning. The tape rested gently on the wooden boards that made up the porch floor, and Cryptic nearly stepped on it as he walked out of the house that morning. Two words were written on it, with silver sharpie and a scratchy handwriting. Play me. The command seemed easy enough, yet Cryptic still had not performed the action. Instead, he sat contemplating various things from the seat of the snowmobile, the most prominent of those thoughts was how he was supposed to watch a VHS tape. Did he even know anyone with a VCR? The question of how did they ever record something onto a tape is just as important to him. Who even uses that anymore? Cryptic knew that the video was essential and needed to find some way to watch the footage. He knew this because he realized the seven birds were missing, along with the tape appearing including his beloved Vincent. And from the way things were looking, he knew the video contained some sort of explanation. Therefore, a trip into town to the local pawn shop was required. He knew it was time to leave when the straw began to suck nothing but air out of the bottom of the bottle. Cryptic wobbled slightly as he left the snowmobile and headed towards the garage. He left in a cloud of smoke as his Geo Metro sputtered and popped down the road, the remainder of the ducks watched as their protector left, sensing the trouble was afoot. An hour later, after making three different stops, Cryptic returned to the home, the ragged but working VCR, sitting on the passenger seat. Pushing Vincent's collection of My Little Pony figures out of the way, he set it on the counter and connected it to the projector. The screen lowered on the far side of the room and began to display a 200-inch loading screen as the projector started up. Gary, Cryptic's pet ferret, sauntered into the room to inspect what was going on. Cryptic kept Gary around to ward off any beavers from settling into the pond in the backyard. He was good at his job, but spent most of the day out of sight, slinking around the house to behind the furniture. As the projector finally finished its boot up and was switched over to the correct input for the new VCR, Gary climbed Cryptic's clothing and leapt into the table. Unfortunately, he was more interested in his search for morsels of food than the case of the missing mallards. Cryptic watched as Gary checked the contents of two coffee cups sitting on the table before backing away from them till he fell off. He hit the ground with a thud, then casually walked off towards the back rooms again. Cryptic simply rolled his eyes at the sight and pressed play on the VCR. The grainy footage first displayed a darkened room. The walls looked damp and dirty, and the lighting was poor at best. It looked to be some sort of dirty, unkempt basement, which reminded Cryptic that he needed to take a shower. Next, the camera panned lower, revealing Vincent tied to a doll's chair. 
holding a piece of paper in his mouth. Cryptic watched as a single tear rolled down Vincent's feathers before reading what was on the note. We don't want money. We just want you to suffer. In one week, all your birds will be killed. A video will be sent so you can watch. Confusion struck Cryptic hard as he tried to think of all the people that could possibly want him to suffer like this. Of course, he had made some enemies over the years, but he couldn't think of any so severe that they would torture him in this way. Of course, there was always the hot dog incident. Then, the losing the hot dog incident. But he thought that he was the only one to remember those. Well, him and Sarah Pinkerton, he doubted she would ever forget. There was no way that she was that butthurt about it to pull anything like this. That led him to think about Trudy Holden, whom he thought was named No-No Wronghole for the first two weeks that they knew each other. Cryptic began to smile and chuckle to himself at the memory. Suddenly, Gary bit Cryptic on the toe as if to tell him to stay focused. Then, looking down, he scooted Gary away with his foot and spoke to him. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Who would want to do this? I'm thinking. I don't, I don't see you helping much. Gary simply spun in a circle before darting off back under the couch, which led Cryptic to another name, Jedediah Crouch. Over the past year, Jedediah had called the authorities over the ducks multiple times because he didn't care for them. He was a crotchety old man that lived nearly a mile down the road. He was convinced the Mallards would one day kill the five goats he had had on his property. If Cryptic hadn't had each one meticulously trained so well, the possibility was, in fact, there. He was also the only person that Cryptic could think of that might still use a VHS camcorder or use VHS cassettes at all. Like a week ago. With a week to go, Cryptic decided that there should be ample time to find out who had taken his beloved winged companions and returned them home. However, his thoughts changed quickly as he awoke the following day and a foul stench filled the air. Besides the stench, the day seemed to go on no different than usual. He ate his typical breakfast of three scrambled ostrich eggs and two slices of meatloaf. He watched the tape again as he ate, searching for any form of clues. All the while, curiosity began to arise about the origins of the stench. Gary began scratching at the door and spinning around, flopping all over the floor in front of the doorway. What the fuck are you doing, you little rat? Knock it off before I turn you into a sock, Cryptic said, clearly agitated at the small weasel's behavior. Gary suddenly ran to Cryptic's leg and bit his foot as if to say he needed to see something. God damn it, what is it? You know they eat rodents like you over in Asia, Cryptic said, as he stood from the table and walked towards the door after Gary. Who sat on the other side of the door instantly changed Cryptic's mind about how much time he had. What looked like a small feathered toe sat next to another tape on the porch. He stooped down to pick up the video and noticed the coloration of the small feathered item so far from a toe, he saw it was the head of Stephen, one of the other favorite ducks, and like a present from an estranged uncle, it made things all too real. The other ducks that remained on the grounds crowded around the front porch with curiosity as Cryptic fell to his knees and yelled curses at the sky. He knew exactly what would be on the tape as he held it in his hands in the kitchen. He also knew that by the look of things, the sick, sadistic bastard that took his beloved waterfowl was going to kill one each day and send him a new tape along with a new trophy. Cryptic popped the tape into the VCR, even though he didn't really want to see the demise of Stephen. He needed some sort of clue who was doing all of this. Cryptic listened to the popcorn pop on the stove as he grabbed a gallon jug of moonshine and sat it on the table. Gary climbed the tablecloth and rested near the jug, anxious for the arrival of the buttery popcorn. As it finished, Cryptic dumped the popcorn into a bowl and set it on the table so Gary could begin transporting a horde of kernels to the right, to the far side of the table. Although Cryptic never intended to stop the little critter's behavior, Gary instinctively felt the need to hide his food. As Cryptic watched Gary squirrel away his fourth popped kernel instead of eating it, he dropped the long end of his crazy straw glasses into the freshly uncorked jug. The dizzying swirl of liquid around his eyes burned his tongue and throat at the mouthpiece end of the glasses. However, 
It was a familiar and soothing burn. Cryptic felt comfort and solace in. After a long pull on the straw, Cryptic steeled himself as he pressed the play button on the old VCR. The video started with a shot of a piece of paper. On it was written a teasing message. It would look like blue blood or possibly a blue marker. It's probably just a marker. Can you feel it, Cryptic? Time is slipping away, and you are no closer. You are far too worthless to stop it. After a few short moments on the message, the video made a hard cut to a scene that caused the partially eaten popcorn to fall out of Gary's mouth in shock. Hands shrouded in oversized leather work gloves used an exacto knife to cut around the edges of Stephen's beak before pulling it free from his head. Whoever this was, they knew how to hit and hit hard. Stephen had always been known for his pristine beak. The killer knew that it would infuriate me to watch him simply toss it into a small trash can, signifying that it was nothing more than garbage. Cryptic shoveled a handful of popcorn into his mouth as he watched the gloved hand remove what was left of the head carefully from the rest of the body. As the hand swept away the body into the floor, the camera focused on the feathered beakless nub that was now Stephen's head. The video suddenly cut out, leaving nothing but static in its wake. After a few short moments of crackling snow on the screen, Cryptic took another long pull from the straw to wash down the popcorn. Gary looked over as if to relay his shock and disgust, but made little more than a mild grumble to make his point. Yeah, I know, Gary. I think we need to pay him a visit, too. Cryptic saw no reason to get into the car, since Old Man Crouch only lived a mile down the road. So instead, he dusted off the saddle for Sarah. Sarah spent most days flapping around the barn. Cryptic's trusty steed and faithful ostrich. An uncomfortable squawk arose from Sarah as Cryptic stumbled and swayed from the moonshine while placing the saddle and climbing onto the large bird. Once finally settled onto the saddle, Cryptic groaned and pointed towards the door. Sarah simply craned her neck and headbutted Cryptic in protest. Ouch! Damn it! Fuck you, Sarah! Just let's get on with it. We're going to Crouch's place. Now get to moving. Gary chattered from the corner of the barn as if mocking the scene played out in front of him. Sarah squawked awkwardly in response before relenting and trotting out of the barn and down the road. It was all Cryptic could do to hold on to the haze of the alcohol and Sarah's bouncing strides. A loud twang rang out as Cryptic and Sarah approached the house, and a harpoon crashed into the ground at Sarah's feet. Cryptic fell out of the saddle and hit the ground hard from Sarah's sudden stop, but quickly rose to his feet. You'd best be getting off my property, Cryptic. I ain't gonna mess with the next one. Damn it, Jed! I know you got my mallards with malice intent. I want them back, you old coot. I didn't come here to get violent, but I'll send you to your grave over those ducks. Cryptic dove behind the nearby tree in the yard just as a second harpoon splintered the wood. Sarah casually turned and walked off around the back of the house while the other two yelled profanities back and forth at each other. The grass in the backyard tasted better for some reason. Cryptic pulled the closest harpoon out of the tree and drunkenly heaved it back at Jedediah. The harpoon tumbled through the air and hit the old man crotch sideways in the chest, knocking the harpoon gun out of his hands as he was trying to reload. The old man wheezed, almost as if astonished that Cryptic was fighting back against him. As soon as Cryptic saw the harpoon gun fall to the ground, he charged the old man, intending to tackle him and bring him to justice for the bird theft. However, how things played out in his mind was wildly different from what actually happened. With a slurred and drunken battle cry, Cryptic charged at Jedediah. The bottom step of the porch caught his foot, however, sending him rolling in an awkward way towards the old man. Jed tried to back away, but all it did was cause Cryptic to crash into his legs, causing his knees to buckle. As Jed hit the ground, his head snapped back, slamming violently against the cabin doorframe. Disoriented, Cryptic rose to his feet, still hunched over towards Jed's unconscious body. He had to close one eye and slightly squint for the other to get his vision to focus, but as it did, he noticed the already large but growing pool of blood collected where the old man sat. He reached out and slapped the old man crotch across the face and mumbled a bit before speaking. You, uh, good? You breathing, old man? After another slap and a couple kicks to the old man with no response, Cryptic spoke again before entering the house. Yeah, fuck it, I'm sure you'll be fine. Just remember, good nap after a hearty concussion is a good thing. Pretty sure I read that somewhere. As Cryptic brushed past the old man, his body slumped further down, revealing a large nail had actually punctured his skull, and he was most likely not getting back up. 
Cryptic had never been in the old crotchety man's house before, especially not with what happened a few years prior involving his prized caterpillar collection, the Wheel of Swiss Cheese, and that Polish SWAT team. Vincent! Cryptic yelled as he stumbled to the door. He knew that his hunch was correct, even without incriminating evidence this early in the search. The house was surprisingly big inside, decorated in a very modern style that Cryptic thought seemed uncanny for the old bastard's age. The massive swigs of moonshine really began to set in as he made his way through the strange interior of the house. Then, there it was, the first piece of evidence. Small, triangle-shaped webbed footprints trailing through the kitchen towards a door fitted with very out-of-place padlocks. Vincent? Stuart, are you down there? Cryptic yelled after a few monotonous moments of pounding on the door. Soft quacks could be heard just beyond the door, and, and Cryptic knew he had to get down there and rescue what was left of his beloved ducks. He kicked at the door, kicked again, tried a third time, but missed, fell over, puked onto the kitchen table, and it was only then that he decided he shouldn't have drunk before his rescue mission. Struggling, he returned to his feet, still leaning and slightly crouched to help his balance in the slight breeze. As he looked cockeyed at the door, he prepared himself to shoulder check the door in an attempt to break it down and save the ducks. As he charged, he stopped short of the door, with one eye drunkenly sealed shut to focus. He looked closely at the locks on the floor. The fuck you too, Gary, said Cryptic, although there was nobody else in the room with him. The locks adorning the basement door were nothing more than cheap plastic. He also noticed the hinges caused the door to open towards Cryptic rather than away, as he had been trying to force it to do. Cryptic made quick work of the plastic locks by using the log splitter sitting on the kitchen sink. As he rushed and nearly fell down the basement steps, the scene before him almost made him vomit. It might also have been the heavy intoxication that made him nearly puke. The dingy basement seemed more like a medieval torture dungeon. Rusted and archaic tools lay on the tables in preparation for some sadistic experiments. Four of the ducks sat malnourished and lethargic in cages far too small, while Vincent sat strapped to a small chair in front of a stained cloth for a backdrop. Stuart lay helplessly strapped to a table next to various knives and other crude tools. Cryptic's mouth fell open as he feverishly thought of how to proceed to save them. Then a peck, a click, and the little red LED lit up a camera aimed at Vincent. Sarah looked ominously from behind the camera at Cryptic, and the realization hit. Betrayal! You and your jealousy helped Crouch steal the ducks. You just couldn't handle the fact that they could fly, and you couldn't. Then you saw that you could have an ally against them with old man Crouch. You set it all in motion. Sarah let out an aggressive squawk in response before charging at Cryptic. He stumbled backwards and tripped, falling onto the ground, knocking over various garden tools leaning against a post. As the massive bird leapt into the air to attack, she landed on a falling pitchfork that pierced into her chest. The painful squawk emerged from the bird as the pitchfork held her aloft for a moment before toppling over and slamming her into the ground. She kicked and writhed for a few moments that brought tears to Cryptic's eyes to watch. Even through the betrayal, he still loved his trusty steed. As Sarah took her final breaths, Cryptic shakily rose to his feet. He pulled the cages apart and ripped off the straps, setting each of the mallards free. Vincent happily sat on Cryptic's shoulder as he carried the others in his arms. Most of them were too weak to move on their own, even though it had only been three days at most. So they took the cellar door's steps directly to the outside. Cryptic carried all six remaining birds as he stumbled his way nearly a mile back to his house. The sun set gracefully behind him as he shambled. Gary excitedly met him at the top of the porch steps when they arrived. Cryptic put the birds into a soft container for them to rest. After he fed them, he finally sat back at his kitchen table, placed the crazy straw glasses back onto his face, and took a long pull from the mouthpiece. As he watched the liquid swirl in the straw around his eyes, he thought, so be forever known as Cryptic Nightmares and the Great Duck Rescue. Good evening once again, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I want to tell you thank you for watching tonight's video, or for listening to tonight's episode of the podcast that's available on Spotify, or on Apple Music, or on... Uh, 
um, any any other places that you can get podcasts. If you guys have loved any of the series you've been hearing on the channel, such as the Neverglade Mysteries, My Tiny Town Has Just Been Put on Lockdown, or Tales from the Gas Station, and you've wondered if there's more, there is. Take a look on Amazon. All these authors and many more have books available on Amazon right now, and some of them I've even done the audiobooks for. Check them out now, see if you can pick up a novel or two, and let them know that I sent you. As always, I want to give a big thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. You guys are the real MVPs, and you allow us to get a whole bunch of custom stories that are only heard here on this channel, on this podcast. So, a very big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Diana Krauss, Maria Walker, Tanya Oren, Payne Gravy, Inactive Hermit, Austin Johnson, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Aka Limchok, Dirt Diver 030, Matt Bach, Jabbles Raz, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Matthew McNeese, Shelly J, Jeremy H, Raltazal, Ficomel, Nana, The Morgan, Nick Weaver, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, Sky Maria Ravenswood, William King, Reaper 61167, Darth Miver, Micah Ortiz, Satanic Ares, Nessie, Parafa Panda, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Billy Morrow, Sashi Suzaku, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Miss Xander, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. And of course, everybody who's down there in the description as well, and everybody who can support on patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta for even one dollar. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for listening, and sweet dreams.